program of the Georgetown University Library Associates and the first Friday Music Series concert. This has been a collaboration between the libraries and the Department of Performing Arts at Georgetown for a number of years, and we have a very special program in store for you today. Before we begin, would you please make certain that your mobile phones are turned off? <coughs> The partnership between the library and the Department of Performing Arts is an opportunity for us to discover and showcase some of the musical treasures that we hold in the Booth Family Center for Special Collections. This year, we have had the unique opportunity to collaborate with Dr. Anna Chalenza, who is the Kessinger Professor of Music at Georgetown, who curated the companion exhibitions, Margaret Bonds and Langston Hughes, A Musical Friendship, and Margaret Bonds, composer and activist. You have copies outside, if you haven't collected this already, it's a great snapshot of the kinds of materials that we have that uh, Professor Chalenza curated. She also has been working for some time with Dr. Tammy Kernodal, professor of music at Miami University in Ohio. Dr. Chalenza and Dr. Kernodal both gave brilliant talks this morning in the library and detailed the items in the exhibitions offered insights not only into the relationship between Langston Hughes and Margaret Bonds, their musical, her music and her performances, but also into the use of music and poetry to achieve social good. The excitement both of these professors transmitted to the audience really was palpable, and is a fine affirmation that library collections and services can actually create new scholarship from existing collections and can indeed transform people's work from the university to the university because of what we collect. Those of you who are here at the library this morning know what an absolutely wonderful, wonderful program that Dr. Canodal and Dr. Chalenza gave, and I would like them to stand and acknowledge our <laughs> today, and it's a great thrill. We will hear from Marlissa Hudson, soprano, and Marvin Mills, piano. Ms. Hudson is a lyric coloratura. She has performed all over the world. She is a performer on both the operatic and concert stages, and has been featured on multiple labels, and has put out two solo albums as well. She received her formal training at Duke University and at the Peabody, sorry, Peabody Institute of Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. Marvin Mills is an organist at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Kensington, Maryland. He's also music director of the acclaimed National Spiritual Ensemble and guest artist with the Ritz Chamber Players based in Jacksonville, Florida. Mr. Mills has performed across the nation as well as internationally and for more than a decade has been a featured artist at the Shenandoah Valley Bach Festival as recitalist, chamber musician, and choral conductor. Hudson and Mills will be performing the music of Margaret Allison Bonds, herself a concert pianist and composer and social activist. A frequent collaborator with Langston Hughes, this program will feature Bonds with musical settings of Hughes's text, including some unpublished and until now presumed lost works. Following the concert, we're going to have a question and answer period with members of the ensemble, and we hope that you will take a look in the library at this wonderful exhibition curated by Dr. Shalenza and members of the Booth Family Center for Special Collections. It's now my great pleasure to welcome Ms. Hudson, Mr. Mills. It is an extraordinary honor to be with you today for a number of reasons. It's a historic time in this country's history with, we all know what's going on down on the mall. 
not the least of which the, the, this connection of Margaret Barnes and Langston Hughes is, is a major part of that for me. Um, how many, of, I'm curious, how many of you are familiar with the spiritual weight in the water? Okay, so most of you. So I don't really have to talk about that. You know, th just think about that text while, while I'm playing this piece. Um, to paraphrase a noted singer, activist, historian, cultural icon, Bernice Johnson Regan, if you're looking to make change in your life, go into the storm. That's what waiting in order is about.
Between us always, loved one, there lies this troubled water. You are my sky, my shining sun over troubled water. I journey far to touch your hand. The trick is troubled water. We see yet cannot understand this faithful troubled water. Deep hearts, dear, dream of happiness bought by troubled water. Between us always, love and this sea, this sea of troubled water. So all her life, Bonds was drawn to Hughes' poetry. Once, during an interview, she described her first encounter with his work. I was in this prejudiced university, this terribly prejudiced place. I was looking in the basement of the Evanston Public Library, where they had the poetry. I came in contact with this wonderful poem, The Negro Speaks of Rivers, and I'm sure it helped my feelings of security. Because in that poem, Langston Hughes tells how great the black man is. And if I had any misgivings, which I would have to have, here you are in a setup with where the restaurants won't serve you, you're going to college, you're sacrificing, trying to get through school, and I know that poem helped save me. I actually met him in person after I came out of the university. The first time I saw Langston was at Tony's house in Chicago. Tony Hill, the ceramicist. Finally, he came to my house. My family rolled out the red carpet. We were like brother and sister, like blood relatives. Oh, 
her work, both as a composer and a performer, they corresponded regularly, and whenever Hugh sensed that Bonds was down or nervous about an upcoming project, he sent her a few words of encouragement. For example, while she was preparing for a recital in Chicago in 1939, Hugh sent her a telegram from New York. I can hear you playing way over here, and it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret moved to New York in 1939, where she played piano at the Apollo Theater and tried her hand at writing popular songs. New York is where I found my voice, right here with Langston. Everybody would look at me and say, look at that poor dopey kid. She wants to be a composer? Well, I did it. I made my living on Tin Pan Alley.
1960. Um, it was, we thought it was lost. Apparently it was discovered this summer in a composition notebook in Georgetown's Margaret Bond's collection. <laughs> so Bond and Hughes collaborated on numerous projects and they wrote two cantatas together. One was for Easter, Simon Moore the Cross, and one for Christmas, Ballad of the Brown King. Both tell the stories of African characters <coughs> who played prominent roles in the life and death of Christ. Simon Moore the Cross almost wasn't written as their fame grew, the time for joint projects dwindled. Sound familiar? <laughs> Except for the fame part, but the time part is definitely true. 4 a.m., Monday, March 25th, 1963. Dear Margaret, it took the entire weekend to assemble my income tax material and list it, which had to be done before I could leave for Cleveland. And on Saturdays and Sundays, my assistant George does not work, so I did not have his amiable assistance. Therefore, practically no time to work on Simon before leaving. And I still have to write my column for the post before train time. But I am enclosing what ideas I was able to put together under the circumstances. For such serious works, one should really have time to sit and contemplate the soul without other harassment such as income tax, <laughs> newspaper deadlines, and speaking dates in the Midwest. So sorry. Sincerely, Langston. Simon Moore the Cross was completed one year later, but never performed. Georgetown owns the only complete score of the cantata. <clears throat> there, this cantata, Simon Moore the Cross, uh, Hughes and Bonds had agreed they would use a spiritual as a unifying factor throughout. I'm not gonna tell you what that spiritual is. Let's see if you can guess. And this would have been an orchestral work, of course, an orchestra and solo. So this is piano and Dutch.
That's who. They crucified my Lord, and he never said a humbling word. Not a word. Not a word. Not a word. And it goes on. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a bit of a departure, mood-wise. So I thought we needed a little break before I started singing this. Because that's a little swing and calypso feel to it. <laughs> I didn't think that would be a really smooth transition. Um, so let's sing it now. I think okay. we agree sufficiently. Yeah, this is the other end, the other end of his life. Yes. <sighs> yeah, transition. <laughs> Three movement piano work by Bonds, 
titled Three Miniatures of Uncle Joe.
both Bonds and Hughes immersed themselves in the history and culture of black America. We younger Negro artists now intend to express our individual dark-skinned selves without fear or shame. If white people are pleased, we are glad. If they aren't, it doesn't matter. We know we are beautiful and ugly too. If colored people are pleased, we are glad. If they are not, their displeasure doesn't matter either. We build our temples for tomorrow as strong as we know how, and we stand on top of the mountain, free within ourselves. Because my mouth is wide. 
correct in thinking that. But you got to give it a little something extra because you're telling a story. <laughs> Bonds' setting of traditional spirituals became immensely popular among African American opera singers in the 1950s and 60s. Bonds was thrilled when she discovered that Liam Dean Price was singing them. October 31st, 1955. Dear Leontine, recently Langston Hughes sent me a program which he had received from Fisk University. Imagine how thrilled and surprised I was to find listed four of my spirituals. Performances are very important to me these days. On March 22nd of this year, I was granted membership into ASCAP Union after being rejected three times. Tuesday, I attended my first ASCAP meeting. I observed that there were few women present and that I was the sole woman of color. This makes me feel a grave responsibility, so you know how happy I am and you must feel to know that you are using my songs. God bless, Margaret Bonds. So he's got the whole world in his hands. It is Bonds' most famous spiritual? Leontine recorded it in 1962, and I'm not sure, I think Kathleen Battle was the one who threw in the high Whatever it is, C sharp? D. 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 Lord have mercy, don't, I, don't, don't, tell, don't tell her. Um, and mess it up for the rest of us. So, a little aside, when I was first working on spirituals in a more in depth way, I came to Marvin and said, there, There's so many are so low. What am I going to do? And he put this in my face, and I have not complained a day since. <laughs> not only that, but he writes some incredible ones, and he threw lots of these. 